Hi there, and welcome back to Triplicate. And in this video, we're going to move on with the Mean Green Synthesizer build. So, last time uh, we got some of the pots working. To our satisfaction, we rejigged the display so that um, is uh, going to working as it's going to work in the final uh, software. Got a nice piece of wire to stop the lid flopping backwards, and we've got another of these multiplexer boards for the rest of the pots, and we have lost it. A little driver chip and we're going to wire the LEDs up and if you remember all the switches are wired with the pots multiplexed with the pots they just go from maximum to zero easier than wiring them separately and finally we're going to wire up the MIDI interface and I think that is it we will then have all the hardware wired up and working so we can actually concentrate on creating a synthesizer. So I will do a lot of soldering, all this and this off camera, and bring you back when we're ready to test it. Okay, so here they are, wired up and ready to go, and connected onto the uh, first multiplexing board to the higher up uh, input numbers. I've tested them with the meter and connected one or two errors so I'm reasonably confident it'll power up and work as it is. However, I haven't screwed it back on yet as you can see because I'm not that confident. Okay, so we have the picoscope going and it's connected to uh, the multiplexed input to the A to D and just to uh, an output that's providing a, a pulse a timing pulse to trigger the scope so should we plug the power in and see what happens oh that looks good um, that's what we're expecting so should I I think I should I have a bit wider picture. Okay, so should we test what we had before first? So um, probably just see my arm here. What am I looking at? I'm looking at the wrong. I am looking at the wrong place. So these are the oscillator controls. Which, yep, I'm probably looking at my head now. <laughs> I can't reach, are all working. Uh, so let's move on to the filter controls here. Yep, 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 and three switches, dong, down. And down. So I think that will do for now. When we're all wired up, we will test it all thoroughly. But for now, we're happy it's all doing something. So I will put these back in the case and I will put the second uh, multiplexing chip on the main board and possibly wire up that guy next. So I'll get on with that and bring you back when I've got something to report. Okay, we've wired this up. It's like the menu controls. You've got four menu switches in the bus, the pot. And there it is, all wired up on the back. And that goes three into the first multiplexing chip into I suppose channel 1 we'll call it and another 2 into channel 2 and this is the channel 2 board which I've mounted on end in here and 
it looks as though it is the same in connection wise as the original one but it's not from the same manufacturer so we hope it's the same we're going to turn it on anyway and this is not connected into the STM32 yet it's just got a wire to a scope probe and that's a wire to the first channel so are we going to turn it on and see if it works okay here we are we've got the picoscope, picoscope I should say, up and running so let us power up the Mega right and yes is that this Uh, should I initially see if the first channel is working? Uh, that's not looking good. So this one is the Yeah, that one's just the pulse for triggering and doesn't look like we're getting anything on the first channel. Okay, so I will have to find out why. Okay, so sometimes the silliest things, the scope probe was not pushed into the clip fully. So now if we are, now we're on the first channel so if we power it up ta -da, we get a series of levels so if we now carefully we hope push this down let's try all these controls so that works yes yes Yes, 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 and that. Okay, so if we hinge her up nice and carefully, so that is on here that is on here that is on here and those two are on the other one so if i now take this scope probe and put it on the output of the other multiplexer ah got that one wrong so that is the pulse and that is the one I want on the output of the other multiplexer so there is only that pot and that switch so far on that so so far so good uh, I will screw this back on up here and start work on the joystick and the output and bring you back when I've got something more to show you Okay, so this is all wired up. The joystick and the output controls wired onto the second channel. Multiplexer board. Uh, got the scope probes on. So, should we power her up and see if she works? Been through it with the meter as ever, so there's nothing too horrible on there. So, let's see what happens when we power it up okay so we have the picoscope running um, as ever so should we power her up and there we go we have things happening so two of these gets that one yeah and that knob 
Yeah. Well, the first two inputs on that side. So we've got, yep, that's the last one, and there's nothing after it, which is why it's just floating. When we get that, there we go. Should be that one. The joystick, whoop, boing, yep, boing, yep, boing, yep, boing. So that all works, including amusing sound effects. So now we have the LFOs. Actually, that's the envelopes and the LFOs to do. Uh, so, um, probably call it a day there because it's a hot day and I've had enough. But tomorrow I will crack on with them and bring you back when there's something to show you. Okay, so here it is, the envelopes, all wired up and ready to go and tested with the meter. I also need to retest the out. I've been putting um, 100 nanofarad capacitors across the 3v3 supply on all these boards, just because there's all this wiring and just hopefully to prevent any nasty pickup, but I'd forgotten to put that one on. I had to move a wire, so I need to retest that. So, let us fire up the Picoscope and see if it works. Okay, Picoscope up and running uh, on the second set of channels. Again, not yet connected on. Uh, here, so uh, should we power it up? Let's power it up. That's looking reasonable. So, uh, the uh, that's not looking reasonable. That is the envelope select switch, which is not doing anything. That one's working. That one's working, and this one's working. But this part and this switch are not working. So, we'll have to dig into that and come back to you. And let's look. Put this down and just check that the joystick and the output are still working. Yep. That's yes. Like in it. Okay, so that's good. So I shall do some digging into what's wrong with this envelope and bring you back. Okay, had to reroute this uh, 3v3 supply wire here. Uh, was going into there, the back of that pot, and I just could not get a, a good soldered joint under there. The joys of strip board. So, having done that, I'm pretty sure it'll work now, so let's uh, try it again. So, I've uh, got the picoscope going, and uh, power her up. Okay, she's running, and... Uh, hey, the switch works, the first part works and the other three still work right so that's good that's the envelope controls done which screw that back onto the front panel and start on the lfos the last one okay so here's the lfo controls all wired up not the neatest but there you go um, mounted the socket too close to the edge which didn't help and tested it out with a meter so it should be 
ready to go. It should be good. Uh, so we'll fire up the picoscope and see how she fares. Uh, right, so let's power her up. There we go, doing the sort of thing it ought to be doing. So let's see what we've got here. Yep, that works. That's the speed pot, that works. That's the... Delay pot, that works. There we go, and that's the waveform select switch. And that's my phone. So, I think we are all good. Um, so, what should we do now? Should we get the LEDs working? Um, I think we should. It's next on the list. So, I'll turn him off and do some wiring up. Okay, so come to wire the diodes up and realise I've made a bit of a mistake. My little driver board uses a ULN 2003 which expects to pull the diode, to, expects the LED to be connected, want the anode to the supply and the cathode, the driver will pull down to ground and I've connected them all up the other way around and at this point I think I'd rather find a different driver board than rewire all the LEDs so what I shall do is leave the LEDs for now and we will move on to the MIDI port. Okay, further thoughts on driving the LEDs. We have here power supply currently set to three point three volts and we have here our LFO boards so that's just connected to ground is to ground and this is connected to the input from the processor so if I connect that to that we get a nice bright LED so I did fiddle around with the driver resistors so I got the LED so it's you know nice and bright but not blinding as you're looking at the front panel so shall we disconnect that from there put this thing into milliamps DC mode that on there that in there our light comes on again and that's two and a half milliamps so those are pretty good LEDs to be putting out that amount of light for two and a half milliamps and that's my phone again so if we look at the data sheet for the STM32 it says here GPIOs general purpose input outputs can sync or source up to 8 plus or minus 8 milliamp or sync and source up to plus or minus 20 milliamps with relaxed VOVL except for PC 13, 14 and 15 and then it says that the total amount shouldn't in exceed the maximum rating in given it specified in section 6.2 which is over 100 milliamps so I think we can drive the LEDs straight from the STM32 with no driver chip, so shall we wire one up and see if it works? Okay, so we've plugged the LFO controls back in. We're going to try and get one of the LEDs working, we don't care which. To which end, I have tacked a piece of wire onto one of the LED drivers and I am going to put this in we can 
can see that this top one which is PB8 you're probably going to have to take my word for that so there we go and we are going to try turning that on and off and see if the light comes on okay and here we have PB8 and we are going to set that to GPO output uh, we're not going to name it for now we may well in the future but we're going to set it like that and we are going to generate code PB8 remember that and we're going to open project and I am going to write a little bit of code to just blink that LED on and off hopefully about every once a second okay so here we have a little bit of code to blink the LED on and off uh, like everything got to be duplicated twice because of the way the system's set up so we will attempt to um, compile it and run it um, And because we've recompiled the Cubamix stuff, it recompiles everything. Ah, it's because I've been moving things around, it isn't plugged in. Right. There we go. Should we try again? Started. And there we go. One flashing LED nicely running off straight out the processor so now i will wire the rest of them up and write some sort of code which uh, flashes them all and bring you back to show you that okay so here she all is uh, I'll just zoom in here and these green wires here are the LEDs which go around the back under there so all in all it's not perfect but it's not too much of a mess and we've only got the wires between the MIDI interface which will go around somewhere around there to do and here we go the front panel is all reassembled so should we try the LEDs now all right so here we have the uh, Cubamex with all the LEDs assigned to pins hopefully the pins I've soldered them onto so should we generate the code so I have some code here which just cycles round each one in turn on a do LED test on a little switch statement oh, I need to get rid of that and I have a little function which just takes an LED ID in a state and 
turns the appropriate pin on and off. Easy! So, shall we just try compiling it first? I don't see what it's doing there. What did they like about that? NAD env. Is that going to? Right, NAD env2. A few little bugs. And now we turn it off. Ah! I changed those to be specific to the job. Yeah, now it's going to do all the. the hell stuff. Come on. And it likes it so, we will power it on like that. Immediately one LED flashing that shouldn't be flashing. That guy shouldn't be doing anything with that code in. So, having got that going, let us try run debug see if we can put in that code we want to and start her up and see what happens hmm. Well, we're getting some LED stuff happening, but not quite what we want. So I will start to dig into that and let you know my findings. OK, that's a bit more like it. That one's working. This one is something interfering with it. I just say I had the uh, on and off in the sense, the wrong sense. So it was going around turn, trying to turn one off at once instead of one on at once. So it comes round that one. That one doesn't work. That one works. That one works. All off. That one on. That one does something funny. That one works. That one doesn't work, that one works, that one works, all off. So we're getting there. Okay, did a bit of digging. And if we look, it was oscillated to an envelope to with the LEDs that were not working. And they are both on port C. And that is giving problems because there are two ways to access GPIO ports on the STM32. One is bitwise, which is what we're doing here. You give it the port and the pin and you tell it to turn on or off. And the other one is portwise. And we are using port C for the display. You see GPIO C ODR, we're addressing the data register as a port, as a whole port. And the two types of addressing a GPIO port don't mix, as we found. So what I need to do is rewire uh, oscillator to an envelope to LEDs to a port which isn't port C. So I will do that and we'll try again. OK, so I have moved those two LEDs on to port B made the necessary changes so now if we power it up it will have the old code in uh, so I need to file a new code in there we go so we fire it up hopefully yes yes Yes, 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 and all off. Round again for good luck. And all off. Okay, happy with that. So now let us 
or wire the MIDI up. So I shall get the soldering iron out again and bring you back when I'm done. Okay, a uh, little bit of test code that just fires out a note on or note off. Alternately, when it changes the LED around, when it sends it, it's using the interrupt, the HAL transmit interrupt. When it sends it, it sets the uh, test pin, port A, pin 5, the test pin high. And on the little callback, all it does is set the test pin low. So I've sent that down and got that running. Uh, so the orange trace is the test pin and the blue is coming out what's coming out of the UART and we can see that's working nicely. So shall we connect that to the at the minute the output from the UART is just floating around with the scope probe on it. We'll connect that to the MIDI interface and see if we get MIDI out. Okay, so we've got the power and the out connected to the MIDI interface. And we've got that connected via a MIDI cable to my little MIDI test board. And I don't think this is going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. Oh, yep. There you can see that's blinking, so there's MIDI coming out of it, which is good. Uh, we can see we're getting those are the two sides of the LED that was blinking so we see we're getting sensible MIDI coming out so I think now we should plug it into Ableton Live and see if we can actually record some MIDI off it okay shaky cam time because I'm using Ableton Live and Camtasia and Ableton Live don't want to run together so here we have the MIDI to the computer which I am Logging in around there, and here's the MIDI interface. And you can see the little light blinking, which is a good sign. The interface thinks it's getting some MIDI. So, if I arm that track, you can see it's in bit, 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 it's getting MIDI in, and record onto that. Uh huh, and you can see. Showing you it's recording notes. Just a series of note on, note off. So, I think we can conclude that the MIDI out from the mean green is working. So now let's move on to the MIDI in. Okay. So, uh, had to do a bit of. I don't know, creativity, inventiveness with the MIDI input. This is the function that um, ST give you in the HAL to receive serial, uh, which you give it uh, the UART obviously a buffer and the size of the buffer and then it will generate an interrupt or a callback function when the buffer is full but we don't want to work like that that's no good waiting till you've got however many notes before you actually process and we want to process MIDI input bytes now so what I've done is I've called that receive IT function in the initialization and the usart one IRQ handler, it gives you somewhere to write your own code. So what I've done here is, if there is a byte to read, we read the uh, data from the serial port and stick it in a buffer. And then when it goes on to the main IRQ handler, here, 
um, it just never gets a receive byte, so it never fills its buffer up, so it, that, it never calls the callback function. So, shall we see if this works? Okay, here we go. So, let us uh, send this code to the STM32. Uh, and fire it up. So the display is just showing the MIDI input. It's just reading a chunk, the, the contents of the buffer and displaying it on the screen. Uh, there's nothing happening at the minute so we will open live and we will start firing MIDI at it. Yeah, there we go. So every time it's updating the screen it's just reading what's in the buffer and it's firing quite a lot of notes and the plus plus here just means there's more than will fit on the screen. So if I slow the tempo down so it's putting the MIDI out slower so we're getting less on the screen. Um, so that I think we'll do for now. I think we'll call the MIDI input working um, and we'll check it more carefully when we actually get to uh, reading MIDI messages. So I think we can say at this point we are happy that all the mean green hardware is working and we can go on and actually start creating a synthesizer. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, please subscribe. Uh, leave a comment if you've got anything to say. Uh, thumbs up would be nice. And for now, it's goodbye from Triplicate, home of interesting electronics. Goodbye.